God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your word. I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people. God, I thank you for a second chance. God, you give a second chance and second chance and second chance. There's a first chance where we always mess that up. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 says it. I believe it and I walk in it daily. I believe that I came in on into this world on my second chance. My first chance was already messed up because I fell into the world in me falling was that first chance and then I am on my second chance and a second chance for you are the God of a second Hezekiah Walker sang it a second chance a second chance a second chance the chances never run out just like you don't run out the chances never run out and I thank you for it God oh God I thank you for the desire to please you God we meet you daily with the desire to please you God I'm seeking after you God for the desire with the desire to please you God there is none like you and I will always have a a continuous, uh, never ending, always abounding desire to please you, God. Desire to please you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I worship you, and I know as I magnify you, I know if I want something to disappear, I minimize it. And so I continue to minimize, never end, never be. I minimize them in my sight. They will not be seen by my eyes. They want more than anything to be seen by my eyes, but I am a queen. And so I walk in the royal priestly, the royal priestly. I know that the blessings that you are giving me, that you are establishing me right now, that I am not supposed to tell those that don't have faith about it, because when you tell people that don't have faith, they will speak doubt into your life, speak doubt into your ears, and as a result of it, you will speak doubt out of your mouth, for faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, so if I speak the word of God to you, and you can't speak it back to me, I know that if you can, that is a sure sign, if you can hold my secret secretly, I speak the word of God to you if you can't speak the word of God to me that fish that they made had a question and an answer it had a question and a solution it had a question and a response to it that fish that they drew they would draw the first part of the fish and the person that was standing there would have to respond with the second part and it would have to be correct because if you come incorrect you can't be a part of me and I choose not to be a part of you and so I thank you God in it I thank you, God, in it. You let me know to batten down the hatches. I don't know exactly what that means, but batten down the hatches, he's saying. Batten down the hatches. Why do I batten down my hatches? I don't know what that means, but I know that he's telling me to wean some people out of it. Uh, wean some people out of your blessing. Wean some people out. My closest friends, it seems, will have to hear about it on the radio. My closest friends, it seems, will have to see about it on the TV. My closest friends, it seems. Oh, God, when you're a queen, when you're a king, sometimes you have to keep your mouth shut. You want somebody to share your testimony with. You just want to share your blessings with. Because I knew last week when I had that feeling just till Sunday was just a mess. And I said, I want to leave. And God said, you go back in the house until I say it's time. Sunday was not time. But Thursday I got the notice. Thursday I got the notice. God said Thursday was the day, not Sunday. Just because you got the prophetic gift and you see things ahead of time. The Sunday was not the day, but Thursday was the day. Oh God. In it, God is glorified. In it, God is magnified. In it, the enemy is minimized again and again and again. He's nothing. Because people try to stand up in their pride and stand against your gift in their pride. But I speak that God is magnified. Because even those friends that try to stand up in their pride and then use what they call their gift to speak against you. And use what they call a gift to speak against what you're doing in the spirit and use your gift to speak against Holy Spirit. Why are you speaking against what I'm doing with my gift when Holy Spirit gave me my gift and he gave you yours too? Does Holy Spirit fight Holy Spirit, sweetie? I doubt it. So I thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I've got joy. You said, we'll get it. you said rejoice in the Lord always. And again, and again, and again, I say rejoice. <laughs> oh, what the question is. Because I need to go by fish. Because fish die. But when I come to you, if I come to you with a rejoice in the Lord always, you better answer me with a, and again, if I come to you with a 
rejoice in the Lord always. You better come with me to be with a surely. Hey, if I come to you and uh, with a yet, you better come to me with a all these things. We are more. Pastor Randy was preaching on Sunday. And I mean, he went through the Bible. He went through my favorites. I got dessert. I got dinner. I got everything I needed for this week. Because I know, I know the word of God. And so I know I recognize it when somebody's speaking. It's, they're speaking themselves. They're walking themselves through the word of God. Like I've been doing. Nobody recognizes it. Walk yourself through the word of God. To build yourself up in the most holy faith. Where are your friends when you need them? They were Judas. God told me this morning, Judas was Jesus' friend. He was, he was actually his best friend. Hallelujah, God. He said Judah versus Jesus. The third time I'm doing this vlog, it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm a doctor's appointment, my weekly, at 2.30. I got a weekly doctor's appointment because uh, my body, I told y'all, I'm stuck together with uh, two twigs stuck together, uh, two picks stuck together with uh, bubble gum and shoestring. Bubble yum. I think I upgraded after I got skaties. He got upgraded me. So I'm bubble yum, not just bubble gum. So that gives me a reason to say thank you, Heavenly Father, for shining your light on me. Hallelujah, hallelujah to God. Judas versus Judas. Oh God, I didn't know where he was going with it with this one morning. And he showed me friends versus allies. He said, allies are, are usually never your friends. But they will stand arm in arm with you because they share a purpose with you. So they will fight with you. They will die with you. They will die for you. They will die to keep you alive. But an ally who will help you just as long as you're standing for the purpose. But an ally does not care about you as a person. They are just there because they're fighting with you because you share a purpose of uh, uh, Romans 8.28. If it be so that you were getting just the Romans 8.28 blessing and they were not, they would leave you in a hot second. They would walk away. They would walk away. They would walk on down the road. Peter, James, and John were allies to Jesus. Me and Miss Belly just had to talk about it. She didn't like it. She didn't like what I had to say. She, she agreed with what I had to say, but she, the people that I signed those positions to, she did not like it. And I said, the ones, those are the three that were sleeping in the inner courts of the Gethsemane. I see it as a temple situation. Because Gethsemane was a temple, right? Wasn't it? Because you had a, a holy of holies, an inner court, and an outer court type situation. And Judas was outside of it. So that gives you the perimeter of what would have been the temple. Because everybody was not allowed to come into the temple, right? Some of them just came to the door and brought their thing there. And said, you handle it. My sin is great. And so, oh, but Jesus is always in the holy of holies. Because that's where they brought the sacrifice to. Jesus was on his way to be sacrificed. They brought... In my mind, they brought him to the temple first. The temple would be Gethsemane, but you had Jesus standing in it as a picture of the sacrifice. So why wouldn't it be a picture? Why couldn't it be a picture of the temple? You have your opinion, I have mine. She agreed with me on that, but she said she didn't know if the friends were really the friends or the allies, really the allies. But I'm going to get into that. So I said, and then after that, you had uh, the, the air course, and the air course had the three. Hallelujah, God. Peter, James, and John. Did she say, yeah, they were his friends, right? I was like, no. Those were his allies. Could have been his enemies. Right? See, see, here it is. I said, why are they allies? Why were they close to be enemies? Because in Matthew 16, Peter got a, a praise from Jesus. He said, it's only that my, by my father's will that these things were revealed to you. 1618, 1623. I haven't seen it in a while, so check me. Right? Bye bye. 1623, it says, uh, oh! Say the Lord rebuke you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. He said in the name of Jesus because Jesus is standing there. He said I rebuke you. You don't value the things of God, but the things of man. They were allies to him. Peter, James, and John were selected to fight next to him. When Jesus left, who went to the gate called Beautiful and lifted that man up and lifted his eyes and said, Silver and gold have I none. I don't have that in my cup. But such as I have, I, my cup consists of some things. My, a little suffering, a little mind my own business. That's Jamie Cup. But blah, blah, blah. Silver and gold ain't in it and so oh god when you look in my cup what do you see in it i don't care what about what's in your cup i'm minding my own business i see what's in my cup i get a fresh hot cup of mind my own business every day and i love it it goes down easy the hotter the better hey, hey, hey. but the sweeter and satisfact more satisfactory it is they lifted him up and said that to him Sir and gold have i none he said arms bones arms bones arms bones arms bones arms bones arms bones arms do you know what you want I say that to me and some of you. Do you know what you want? I said, 
on Sunday when I looked, I said, I said, we, some of us want pity. Some of us want pity in our situations. And that's a picture of this man because he was saying, um, 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 um. But alms are praise as well as money. So they was asking for money, but if you don't give me money, you can pity me in my situation and build me up in a most holy faith. The Bible don't say build, people build you up in the most holy faith. It said build yourself up, Jude 20, in the most holy faith. But on top of that, you don't know what he was asking for praise or for money. And I said, look at the definition of arms. I wasn't looking at the Bible. I know it, the scripture, because I looked at it for myself. You don't know what that man's asking for. When he said arms, I'm asking you, what do you want? Arms, palms, Bombs. He could have been asking for bombs. We don't know. We don't know. Because bombs would bring healing. But if you want healing, then you go to your brother for it. Confess your faults one to another and be ye healed. That's the word of God. So da, 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 I need to know what you're asking for before I pray about it. Before I pray with you. I can't keep, you can't keep coming to me and telling me go up to, go up at God in prayer for you when I don't know what you are asking. Because if you keep telling me to pray for you, my mind goes to this. Okay, is she praying for herself? Arms, 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 arms. Are you asking for praise? Or are you asking for money? Either way, you are sitting at the gate and that is not what you need. That is not what you need. You're missing a letter. You're missing a letter. Hallelujah. And I'll, I'll let you take it away from the title. Take it from the title. You're missing a letter. What, think you, what letter do you think he's missing? The B. Oh, God. You're missing a B. Somebody said that the, the letter B chases after the letter A, but it will never catch it or subdue it. But what B doesn't realize is that it has a purpose. In it, you are missing a B in the situation. We don't need an A in it. He has this A. Arms would be that A. You need a B in front of arms to get what you need. He needed balm. He needed healing. He needed something that would heal him. He did not need money and he did not need praise. We all want to pat on the shoulder and say, oh, I'm going to encourage you. No, encourage yourself. We want somebody to build us up in the most, most holy faith. No, no, no. Build yourself up, Jude 20. says build yourself up in the most holy faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing out of word of God, so speak faith to me. No, 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 no. Get your word and start reading it. That will be you as it goes in your ear. As you read it out loud, it will go in your ear. You can speak faith to yourself. You're asking people to do for you what you could do for you. And that's disgusting. Consider that. You sluggard. Get up off the ground. And stop asking people to give you what you've already got inside of you. Huh? What happens when we don't use the gifts that we have? We become abomination. Y'all know that's my favorite word, abomination. Because if I plant the seed, God plant that seed inside of you. If a seed is planted inside of you, it will without doubt grow. Because you are good ground. God only plants those seeds like that in good ground. He will, he will not, the Bible does not say he cultivates all the seeds. Seeds are thrown. There are some fall on good, some fall on by the wayside, some fall on thorny, and some fall on, uh, what's, what's the other one? There's another one that begins with a C. By the way, that ain't it. So, 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 so but that's just, he, that, that seed fell inside of you, uh, your good ground, God said that you're good, he will cultivate it, and God will turn it over. And then, even though he planted it, somebody waters, but God gives the increase. If God has a promise to give good ground, plants the increase, then they will grow and become plants. They will not stay just seeds. But if something is planted inside me, and because God does his job and it cultivates it, it becomes a plant, then how would I be a human? Not with a seed planted in me, but with a plant planted in me, I would be an abomination. You have a tree inside of you, and he shall be like a tree. Psalm 1 verse 3, inside of you. If you are a tree with a plant inside of you, you are an abomination. There's always a cycle of life that comes through. A cycle of life with pain. A cycle of life in growing. But some people don't realize, I don't want to go through anything. I don't want to be bothered with anything. So stay a lay of the sin on this level. You stay a lay of the sin and you do not grow. You do not go through anything. You do not grow. Those processes do not happen. Those processes do not happen with you. If you do not grow, you are retarded. In the spirit. Bink the bunk, bend the body, be body, boo. You are 45 years old going to work with a bonnet on. Wick, knock, piddle, pat, diddle, body, boo. Nobody understands the spiritual warfare that goes on inside of my house. What God told me to do is he told me to turn both TVs on and blast them. And then I saw loud because when I walk up the steps, I can't hear my TV. But she's banging, banging, banging because she cannot understand what's going on. My TV is up to full volume and God said keep it that way. The TV's not loud in my house at all. 
I love the sense that I could barely hear it outside my door. But she's banging, oh, kicking, oh. Because remember I prayed and God said, pray that I confuse her purpose. He told me and I turned the TVs up. I turned the TV on down here and I turned the TV upstairs. She don't know where I'm at. And I turned the TVs up, robbery, stompity, robbery. After I turned the TVs up, I, I tiptoed through the house. Because I'm tiptoeing under the sound of the TV. I'm making a cover noise. Something that will cover me, right? But I'm not walking in the COVID. I'm walking in the cover. For that love covers a multitude of sins. So if I'm walking in it, I'm hiding from the sinful people, the sinful wretches that they be. I'm hiding from them. I'm not hiding out of fear. I'm hiding and I have joy about it. And I'm walking under the cover up night. And I'm walking up and down the stairs without being noticed. I will not be followed. I still keep my vapor up close. But I will not be followed. And I'll also not listen. That's what God said. In this season, do not tell her anything. I will not be followed. Hallelujah to God. He said Judah or, Ju- or Judas. Oh, that glory. Judas. Friend of foe. We talked about this before. Is Judas my friend or is he my foe? He's my friend. This should make you question, do I have a Judas in my, cal- my Calvary, Calvary, whatever that is, do I have in my company? Is there a Judas amongst me? Always. If you are reaching and going towards ministry, there will always be a Judas amongst you. The question is, do you see? The problem is, we have our nose and everybody else's concern. We should focus on the purpose that we have before us. John 2, chapter 4, Jesus told Mary, he said, Woman, what does it have to do with me? What does your concern have to do with me? First of all, <laughs> I've got nothing to do with this. And anyway, even if I did, it ain't my time. We rewind. It ain't my time. Not we, could, we could give Mary credit and we did that. We looked at it from both perspectives. Y'all know how I like to do that. Look at things from every perspective when God tells me to. And in that perspective, Mary gets some credit because of the fact that she walked in faith where we, where we refused to. She walked in faith where she saw her son do things, but she had not seen him die. And so there's a little bit of credit that goes to her. A little bit of, little bit of uh, uh, clap your hands for her. Yay, glory. For Mary, for, for Mary's faith, she did have some faith where we, we can't even, we've seen the picture, we know that he died and we don't even want to walk in the faith that we're supposed to walk in. And so, ah, I got to give her that. However, however, she did, she did, she did, she did, she asked out of time. Could it be that Jesus came in his allowance and just did it because he knew we would be reading it? He knew that some people will not understand why I am doing this. And so I may say no to you, but afterward my father may tell me to go ahead with it and I will, I will, I will give it a yes. So that it's not my time, it's not my time, but he didn't, he got up and poured the wine. What is that? Judas is my friend! <laughs> He calls all the disciples his friends. The reason why he taught me to picture out the allies first is because the allies were the three that were closest to him. Remember? It was a history. History. It was of America, France, and some other country. I forget. It may have been England. I think it was England. And they all came together and they were fighting. They called themselves the what? The allies. Do I look like you? No. Do I sound like you? No. Do we even speak the same language? No. But what we do know is that something's going on and we don't like it. So we have purpose to, to get rid of it. We have purpose to fight it. And with everything we've got, we got purpose in it. We will fight it until the end. We don't like this thing that's going on. I don't have to be like you to fight with you, do I? There's a like-mindedness. And one thing about it, when the, when the war is over, when the threat has, has, has surpassed, allies get up and leave because they have no other reason to be in that, that, that the, in the same area with you. We don't even have the same language. Before we had something of camaraderie that said, at the end of the day, I don't like him and neither do you. Now that he's gone, there's, there's no other. It could be Germany that they were fighting against. A friend. A friend will not fight with you. They're not said to. They don't really believe in your cause. They don't believe in your purpose. Peter stood up and he said, he said, but who do you say that I am? Peter said, I say that you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Right? The situation with most allies. Right? I believe whether they leave or stay. It's very common that they leave. But whether they leave or stay, they have the same purpose. Usually there's a split between the two. 
Because now that we, we have defeated this thing, we have shown it who's boss. Now that I, I could go my way and you could go yours. And what, I, and what, did, he, what did he say, Matthew 28, 18, 19, 20? All power has been given to me. Right? He said, go ye therefore into the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to preserve all things. And lo, I be with you always, even to the end of the world. That's me. That's an ally. That's what you do for an ally. Huh? Those allies still split. Peter was still an ally to Jesus. Were they friends? Absolutely not. They were allies. They had a common purpose. Him and John, Jesus and John, had a common purpose. John laid on Jesus a chest. And yet they had a common purpose purpose that's why they stayed together and fought fought you must realize just because someone's in your life it doesn't mean that they are your friend they could be your ally only there to help you in your time of need you have a common purpose and as long as that purpose exists i will be there so 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 jesus left but peter and john and james they kept the they kept the ball rolling they kept it going seriously even more so than they would have if Jesus was still on earth. James was the first, what was he the first? Uh, uh, massacre, not massacre, um, martyr. For the faith. I believe in this thing so strongly. I will lay down my life with you. I will stand elbow to elbow. Click, click, click. Peter was crucified. He was going to be crucified up, right side up. They he said, no, 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 no. I got to go upside down because I cannot die even re- resembling what he looked like when he, he gave up his life. Hey, God, glory. God, glory. Allies. We got allies in this world. But then we also have friends. <laughs> Those are the ones that sleep in. I need strength. I couldn't get, I had a hard time getting through last week. I need strength. You cannot call a friend when you need strength. Friends are there to laugh at you, to eat with you, to have fun with you, and you need that. You need that. But, but, but you cannot call a friend when you need somebody to strengthen you. Because strength is not something that I could get automatically for myself. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So I must take the joy of the Lord and cash it in. Cash it to my joy to get strength, right? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Christ strengthens me, right? He puts strength in. Just like encourage, it says a poor encourage in. Strengthen me. Somebody pour strength into you. I need somebody to strengthen me. Oh, my brother, my sister. Strengthen me. But if you, if you strengthen me, if you encourage me, generally, I can't call you friend. That ends our friendship. It just seems that it's hard to be in a, a situation. That's why, that's why we, have a, we have the king-queen re- relationship set up. Because that person is your friend, your ally, right? And they're also your mate. But in this world, my friends cannot be... They cannot be my allies. We were talking earlier and I said, friend, ally. And I, but I said, wait a minute, no. They're either friend or ally. They cannot be both. And God laid it on my heart. He said, Jamie, I'll take you through this time, the short, brief time. Because if I hadn't uh, laid down to it and accepted it and said, okay, everybody says what Jamie wants to do. Everybody's still my friend. That is not the truth. And so if I had not laid to it and given into it, it would have lasted longer. Since I did it, God said, now I want you to look at the situation for real and tell yourself, tell me, who are your real friends? And who are your real allies? Do you know? Is there a dividing line? If you're in trouble, like you were last week, who came to your rescue to help you, to lock elbows with you, to pray with you, and then who came to your rescue to help you, to lock elbows with you, to cry with you, and to be there for uh, as a shoulder to you? Who was there for you? It's a hard test to take. And you got to be honest when you take it. And I said, God, is this really a word for today? It seems kind of itchy. It seems kind of rough on me, like sandpaper, two by skin. And then I went online with that girl I told you about, who does exactly what I do, except she's pretty. So, so I went online, I saw her. She did a blog this morning. You know what a blog was called? Watch out for your frenemies. 
I'm telling you, God is saying this today. He's saying this. He will not send a king into your life if you still got friends around you that will kill the relationship with their mouth. I've got a couple of them around. And it's okay. See them for what they're to be used for and then get up and get out of there. Do you want to go to a party? Yes! Do you want to go get some groceries? Yes! Do you want to go to the Jersey? No! <laughs> Make the list. Write it out. We write out the list of all these things, but yet in all these things, can you list all these things so that God can take you over all these things? Sometimes the over lies in the friendships that we have. We have to cross over. But in order for you to get the king that you are asking for, that person may be abusive towards your relationship. Sometimes you've got to let them go. And then sometimes, what well, well, God showed me, you don't have to let that person go completely. Just don't tell them nothing. Some people draw off of you. You can't feed them. Because if you feed them, they'll never go to God for what they need. And what they need is a drenching. What they need is a fresh outpouring. What they need is a cup filling. Because as long as you are there and you feed their uh, ego, I'm, I'm helping this person right now in the name of Pastor Ketikos and of myself. I'm helping them. They are, they'll be a help by me. So the moment I come around you, the question is always, how was your week? You're not asking for me. You're asking for you. Judah or Jesus. Judah or Judas. Who, God? Who were you walking in this season? We already looked at her. We said the outside ones were the friends. The inside ones were the allies. And you got Jesus there at the outside of the whole system. Judas still existed as a disciple. He didn't stop being a disciple until he died. What is that, God? Selah. Will people use your gift to bless them? Or will people use their gift to bless themselves off of you? Yes. Yes. If I have a gift of helps and I don't want to talk to God because I have a couple things going on with God. I'm mad at God. You took my mother. You took my father. You took my cousin. So I'm mad at God, right? I don't want to talk to God. I don't want to go to God for anything. It may not even be that I'm mad at God. I just don't want to talk to him, right? But I'm going around and I reject God, what God is doing and everybody else, right? I reject that, right? And so I push that off, right? But so my, that will dehydrate my gift. Holy Spirit is dehydrating your gift on purpose to help you. Dehydration sometimes comes as a blessing. Because if I don't dehydrate you, you will die. There are people in Jersey that have drank, drank too much water and have died. There are people in the Jersey that have not drank enough water and have died. There is an alarm that goes off in our body anytime something's happening. The question is, the reason why some of us are sick is because of the fact that our alarm systems are messed up. My alarm system for my immune system is kind of janky. Right? So tell me one thing is going on when another is going on. So my doctor just goes crazy. Because it's janky. It's, it's a janky alarm system. It was okay until my mother started beating me. It's okay. It's still okay. It's still good. It's exactly what God wants to be. Because I'm not leaving and going nowhere off this planet until God is ready for me to go. He is good. So my system is still good. Right? You call it janky, but I call it good. Right? Her father is a testimony to what God can do with a, with two toothpicks, a stick of bubble yum, and a cotton ball. And some string, some dental floss. Used. So... <laughs> Will people use their gift? Use their gift to fill their gift and off of saying they helped you. Yes. When I'm dehydrated spiritually, it's because my gift isn't being used. I'm just be honest with you. I went to I was dehydrated spiritually. I was knocked out, tired, drugged down, beat up. My, my, nobody was here for me during that time. That was two weeks ago. This woman stepped her, stuck her head out as I was sticking my head out to get my groceries and then told the man standing right there, don't talk to her, don't talk to her, she don't talk to nobody. And he just looked at her like, I said, Mister, sir, 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 don't get distracted, just look at me. Took my two fingers, like you know how you do your two fingers with some of my eyeballs? Just look at me, look at me. You're talking to me about my receipt and my money. Please don't say anything out loud about my receipt. Email it to me. You have my contacts. Thank you. If 
you, F you, F you, F you, F you, why? 